Budget Live Bar and Grill here in beautiful Southern Middle Tennessee. And this, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is the podcast for Monday, May the 22nd, 2023. You bunch of low lifers. And if you are just joining for the first time and you wonder what a low lifer is, well, you are now one. That's what the listeners of this podcast refer to themselves as. So welcome one and all. We almost through May, y'all. Almost through May. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. If I sound a little hoarse today on this fine Monday, if I sound a little, if I sound a little hoarse, it's because I was yelling and screaming and hollering at the uh, Steelwoods concert last night with Hudson Duncan, my sixteen-year-old who had to, almost sixteen-year-old who had them double X's on his hands because Daddy took him to the bar last night. <laughs> Dude, listen, you're not living. If you don't take your kids to a to a small show in a small venue, see a great band like the Steel Woods, and they got to get double X. I'm sorry. I know some people are like, you know what? I should direct my children to, to you know, do as I say, not as I do. Well, uh, I'm not promoting that he drinks. I just think it's good to get some of that shock and all out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Hudson's been just going to shows with me since he was uh he was a wee little pup. But uh, last night in Nashville was rowdy with them Steelwoods boys. That's for damn sure. And uh, you know I'm a big Steelwoods fan. I'm always rocking that forever rowdy hat for the guitar player that passed away. But Hudson and I went up to Nashville to the Brooklyn Bowl. If you're ever in Nashville, it's a great venue. Uh, it's my first time getting to visit the Brooklyn Bowl. But uh, very cool. Tanner and I hope I'm saying this right. Us right. Got me a t-shirt. Heard a lot about him. My buddy Tanner Lyons that actually films Boats and Pros and, and works for the MPFL and does many things in life. A creative individual and a Texas man told me about Tanner Usray many, many years ago. And uh, he's fantastic. I enjoy I enjoyed him. He opened for the Steelwoods. He's got a big following around Texas. I've, I've had a lot when I posted on Instagram, a lot of you lowlifers reached out like, he's the truth. He's a talented young man, good songwriter. So enjoyed that. And I and I always gotta buy some merch. Yeah, I gotta have that merch. Gotta have that merch. But yeah, if I'm a little gravelly, that's why. And uh also from yelling and hollering at the Bassmaster Open way in yesterday at Hank Weld, and I was just like, Hank, you need to DQ somebody for something. You had a tournament this week that didn't have any drama. <laughs> I went down to Decatur with the boys yesterday too. It was World Traveler yesterday. I'm recording this on Sunday, as y'all well know, uh, for the Monday podcast. But uh, drove down to Decatur, Alabama, to watch little Sammy George. He was leading it going into the last day. Shot at the Bassmaster Classic there on the home pond and and uh, sacked him up 15 pounds, but just wasn't enough. Adam Rans- Rasmussen, I don't know how you say his name. I apologize, brother. Uh, had a hell of a final day. And uh, Sammy came up about three pounds light and ended up falling down to fourth place. Brandon Polnick, of course, almost won that two seconds in a row for BP. But, uh, but yeah, we were down there and got to visit. Uh, the LOB himself was there with his insurance in hand and and uh, got to see Sam George's family and a lot of a lot of old friends down there around Decatur at the uh, at Old Ingalls Harbor, watching Sammy try to take it home. But still a great week 
in that open for Sammy, but yeah, I was like, Hank, how are you even functioning when there's not any drama? But oh, has there been drama in bass fishing this week? And we're going to get there as soon as we thank these sponsors. StarTron, kicking ethanol in the teeth, in your chainsaw, in your weed eater, but most importantly, in your outboard engine. Stupid dumb ethanol is in all your gas, unless you're buying that ethanol-free gas, and then it's a lot more expensive than the normal gas, okay? So get you a bottle of StarTron, put it in there every time you fuel it up, and kick ethanol in the teeth. Enzyme-powered fuel treatment. It's everywhere. You have no excuse not to get it. You can shake it or not. That is up to you. Appreciate the folks from StarTron bringing you low budget live. Pro God Batteries, ProGodBatteries.com. LBL10, if you are indeed a low lifer, LBL10 will get you a break on, in my opinion, some of the best batteries in the game. There's a lot of battery companies out there. Pro God has been in business for many years. They have several OEM manufacturers. <laughs> that was, I did not say that correctly. Manufacturers, not ores, manufacturer ores, manufacturers in the marine industry. They're actually building the boats, okay? Not dealers. Th those are the folks that put things through the ringer the most. And they have several OEMs that have always leaned on their product. They've been in business for a long time. The new lithium line, the trolling motor batteries, the new starting batteries. Check them out. ProGuyBatteries.com, LBL10. Bait works.com bait dash works.com you can get these right here Look. let's grab this one you won't be able to see it so it doesn't really matter it's all these lights Ooh, peanut butter and jelly lob now available now available took that bad boy out this week and did some old fish yanking on it as a matter of fact out deep throwing the half ounce out out deep on like some 15 pound line Caught him. Man, down at the open, I actually talking to Sammy George, caught some fish on that this week. Uh, he actually told me that at one point in practice, he thought he would win on an LOB on one pattern he got on. Crazy to hear. My boy Justin Kimmel had a good event down there. He was like, dude, I need some of those LOBs for the situation I was in. So the fact that it is getting uh, recognized as a fish catcher by fish catchers is something that uh, I don't take for granted. And, and they do eat it, man. They do eat it. We, uh, we got it right, in my opinion. The colors are right, and uh, the sizes are right. The hook's right. That trocar gets them, but you can find them at bait-works.com. Duncan-10 saves you money. Of course, they got a huge mega bass selection. I've been throwing that mag draft around. If you talk to Brandon Polnick, he's all about that jerkbait life right now. He's catching them on a jerkbait all the time. You can check it out at bait-works.com. Get on there. Tell them you're a low lifer. I see y'all using that code all the time, and I, it, it is much appreciated. Much appreciated to know folks paying attention to that. That is for sure, and I know the folks at Baitworks appreciate that as well. And last but not least, let me slide over here so we can take a look at that crooked banner, as Fat Cat says. Hang the banner, the Bassmaster Classic winning high-performance aluminum bass boat, 96-inch being the Express X21 Pro. But don't just focus on that X21 Pro. They've got an entire line from bay boats to the small guys. I won't, I won't like one of their... 17, 18 footers, so bad, so bad. Clay, Rory, if you're listening to this, just Santa Claus one in the garage. I do. I want a smaller boat, uh, and and even th their small boats are packed with performance. Sea deck, great tackle storage, just like the big boats. Of course, on that X21, you can hang that 250 Yamaha show, scream up and down the lake, best hole shot in the game. Express boats, there is one thing that is for sure. They have been building excitement since 19. 66, 1966. So many of y'all, too, uh, as we as we move on, so many of y'all reached out the StarTron commercial. My my man, Tanner Lyons, I talked about the first of the show. We we shot. It's been all over the place. Y'all y'all messaging me about it. I actually heard from uh, several folks last weekend that saw it on Fox Sports during the Lay Lake deal. I actually filmed that at my house in my shop in the woods here and then down on Wilson Lake. It was pretty cool. Tanner and I, StarBright, uh, kind of start trying. They let us run wild with that a couple couple years ago now, and uh, Tanner killed that. So thank y'all for reaching out on it. It is cool to to hear. You know, I was out pressure washing last weekend, and I was joking with Marissa Triple Threat. I was like, uh, it's because people apparently it hit all at one time. Obviously, and people were texting, "Oh man, I just saw you on TV," and I'm just out there just 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 buried up in some pressure washing. I was like, man, just living the dream. <laughs> 
people are like, man, I bet you're just getting fed grapes this morning because <laughs> you're on TV. <laughs> like a couple of my neighbors reached out. It's just funny. I was like, yeah, yeah. Didn't even know it was on TV. <laughs> uh, thank y'all for reaching out on that. For sure. Speaking of uh, Brandon Polinick, real quick, got to go back. BP is one of those. Um, I've talked about it on here many times. He's one of the most genuine humans of all time. He's somebody I, I sincerely appreciate what he does for the sport, what he has done in the sport. He is uh, He's an inspiring dude to be around, and, and I got to spend some time with him. And, of course, Hudson and Ryder, my boys, are gigantic Brandon Polinick fans. I, I was joking with him. He costs me merch money all the time. All my buddies that got these cool hats and, and shirts cost me money because my boys are all over that crap. And uh, and he had a new hat on yesterday, and I was like, seriously, dog? Seriously? Like, it's $30 every time I get around you, I feel like. Um, and he's just glad, you know, he just laughs and gladly takes it. But he he is on, uh, he, you know, kind of had a rough start to the year, I guess. And, man, he's on fire right now. And it's interesting. I don't think, you know, congrats to Will Davis Jr. for fishing an amazing event on Lay Lake. But, you know, talking to Brandon, dude, he had a dead one. He had a coal float kind of get caught and something in his live well and kill a fish and ends up losing by two ounces down there at Lay. It's just uh, – because he fished a fantastic event as well. and and uh, But, you know, when it's not meant to be, that is the most cliche thing in bass fishing. But, gosh, man, doing live coverage and, and, and fishing myself. And, dude, you just see that all the time. Like when things start to universally line up for someone, the damn freight train won't stop it. It's uh, it's very interesting to see, and the same goes for when people just get completely off the rails. There's not, it's really hard to get it back on the track sometimes, and and uh, that was one. You know, you saw Christy, this epic fish catch that would have potentially won it for him there, and then Will squeaks it out. But Brandon, second place two weeks in a row, and uh, really kind of using the, the a lot of the same baits he has. It's it's interesting to see how bass fishing is evolving. He and I were talking about that, just some of the patterns that these guys are figuring out more and more and more as we get in with forward-facing sonar and as the lakes certainly get more pressured that they can just keep kicking out fish that they do. And and uh, it was really interesting to see. But he's lost, I think, like, like 12 ounces, two tournaments, <laughs> two weeks in a row. But the coolest thing, my buddy Sammy George, home lake down there, and he just missed out on winning. And uh, two great days. Just fished a great event all the way around. Didn't lose any fish. He He's fine with it. He's content with it. He spent more time on that lake than anybody I know in, in recent years. But uh, to hear Brandon be like, it's really hard to try to beat somebody but also be pulling for them. And I thought that was really cool because he likes to see people succeed. He does. Of course, he's ruthless with them wins. He's like anybody else. He wants them. He wants all of them. But he is such a uh, such a kind soul. But he said uh, he said because he had almost twenty one pounds yesterday. He ends up finishing second. He told me he's like, dude, I was out there after I, I, I cold, thinking I'm gonna feel like crap if I beat Sam because <laughs> Sam's had a few seconds. He's narrowly missed making the elites. He's just had some really crazy ha- things happen in his fishing career. Great anglers just had some just very close calls, man. And I really thought this was going to be it. And Brandon's like, I was feeling like crap. (laughs) And that's just, that's something you don't hear a lot of people say, but he sincerely means it. Um, So another great event for Mr. Polinick. And real quick, Christy, what, what do we say about this? I don't know. I think it's like this. The fact that he caught a nine pounder, the biggest pass of the Elite Series, gets caught on a yum dinger and a spinning rod at Lay Lake and some lily pads. Lay has some big fish, okay? Back in the day, you heard of they used to stock Florida strains in there and whatnot. But crazy to think that out of that run of the Elite Series tournaments where you got Santee, Murray, you know, Seminole, Okeechobee, that, that Lay, little old Lay, tough Lay, produces this. Just freaking megalodon! It was uh, it was pretty freaking epic. If you haven't watched Jason's GoPro video on that, it's uh, it's worth a watch on the socials. All right, moving on. There's so much to talk about, and we got a good guest. So much I have to like put my two cents in just because I can't help myself. But uh, but before I get to that, I gotta say a huge freaking congratulations to Fat Todd Castledine. Five Toyota Series. 
Angler of the Year trophies. Five in arguably the most competitive divisions out there. All them Texas just freaking Stone Cold Killers. Five Todd Castle Down Angler of the Years. Five. The man is, uh, I like to give him a hard time. He knows that y'all know it. He's incredible. He's incredible. So, congrats to Todd on that, and congrats to young a young man that I do not know, but I feel like I do after this week because I say this all the time. You can tell you can tell the good guys in the sport by how many times their successes, their victories, is a lot like Sammy George this week get shared on social media by their colleagues. And a young man from New York, Alec Morrison, twenty four pound winning margin. 24-pound winning margin there at uh, Sam Rayburn, the New York kid, fishing brush piles, blows it out against a lot of studs, but he catches over 70 pounds, wins by 24 pounds, record-setting fashion. It's impressive. But, yeah, I've seen so many people that I know and respect um, talk about that young man this week, and very cool. Lives up close to Lake Champlain, so to go down there and get it done is uh, is very, very impressive there at the Toy Yoda series. Don't do a lot of Toy Yoda series covering here. You got to. You got to throw it in there. You got to throw it in there. Now, let's see. I'm going to call this section, what should we call this? I'm going to call this section the, let's see. I don't know what to call this section. Let's call it this. One of you turds is about to get smacked in the mouth. Let's call it the, Section of Low Budget Live. One more time. One of you turds is about to get smacked in the mouth. Or should. This is this is all the bass fishing drama. <laughs> I got called the uh, Jerry Springer RIP of bass fishing one time. Not the case, but hilarious. And, uh, and this week, dude, it is just like social media is like a big pile of uh, – fish crap when you catch a bass in their school and they just and they just freaking just all over you it's it's like that this week just fish everywhere everywhere the internet is running the internet is running a muck son i mean running a muck <laughs> and i'm here for it i'm here for it first of all i want to say had Keith Poche on last week. So many of y'all watched that. More people than normal watched it, tuned in, because they got to hear what that man is saying. And I, I, got, uh, I got myself, like, simply having him on. This is what I'm going to say. This is the bass fishing industry, right? Because there are a lot of people, a lot of people that think Keith is right. And there are a lot of people that think Keith is wrong. And, and these are industry people, these are fans, but I got, I got smacked in the mouth, as the little boy from Talladega Nights says. I got smacked in the mouth just for simply having Keith on by some industry people, by some professional anglers. You made him look like a hero. Like, people are so passive aggressive in that, especially when I host a show week in and week out. My intent of having Keith on was to just let him talk hear his story. I have my own opinions on it. Um, I think all that is wild what he does. I think it's cool that he puts in that kind of work. I do think he's at a disadvantage a lot of times. Um, I think that it, uh, I, I think that it's amazing that it's that divisive, you know, but, uh, you know, Polnick commented on a post I made sharing a clip from the show about him jumping a gravel road back in the day or wanting to. And he says, as long as there's like a culvert or a stream actually hitting the lake, he's good with it. And that's where I'm at. I'm fine. I don't know. To me, it comes down to the wording of the rule, okay, on whether or not he should have been DQ'd. He should have been DQ'd. But, but regardless of that, I think it's funny that people get upset that I give a guy a platform to talk and these are the same kind of people that if I talk about something going on with MLF, for instance, they're excited, right? It's damned if you do, damned if you don't when you're in my, my shoes. And I do – I'm independent. Like, like you know, there are lots of shows out there, obviously. There's there's too damn many fishing podcasts, and podcasts, period, but fishing podcasts especially. But I'm, like, independent. Like, other than working for MPFL 
being an actual contracted employee by them, and I've still given my opinions on things that they have going on, and they know I will continue to do that uh, for the most part, unless it's a very sensitive subject, uh, subject because I do have a non-disclosure agreement. I've talked about that on here before as well. But, like, I, I have no allegiance to anyone. I, it's what kind of built this show over five years. And, and whether I agree with Keith Poche or disagree, I wanted to have him on the show to get his side, to hear his story. He's very passionate about it, um, you know, and there's a lot of smoke that follows Keith. I will say that. I've said that on the show. I said it to him. So, damn, you're a troublemaker. You got the him and Ish Monroe fighting down there at the lock that time. You got the Red River controversy from last year that led to rule changes. You've got several things like that. So Keith is not innocent. And I do think that Keith saying, you know, he asked for uh, – he, he was going to ask for, for forgiveness instead of permission because he had checked on that gravel road situation. I, I don't think that – I don't think that uh, – get you a free pass to do whatever. I don't. But at the same time, I also wasn't going to argue with a guy on the show um, because his story is very cool. It is. Like his entire career being in the industry has changed. I talked about that at Transform. But anyways, I heard from multiple people at the first of the week last week just for simply having the guy on. And this has happened to me multiple times in my career if somebody disagrees with something somebody says or I've even had sponsors – back in the day that are no longer with me, that tried to, uh, that I left, that tried to control who I could have on or not have on. And it's just that it's silly. It's silly because um, I won't talk to everybody on this thing. Like Boyd Duckin and I have obviously butted heads as far as from an ideological standpoint multiple times. I would have Boyd on this show tomorrow. Like I, and I'm not just going to fist fight over stuff. Um, so anybody was like, I, I had people say, man, you made him look like a legend and a hero, whatever to each his own. But I know Keith's got a lot of support and I know that Bass has got a lot of support on it either way. And a lot of people were like, Keith should shut up and move on. And, and, uh, and that was some of the points I was trying to make too. He finished 29th. It wasn't like they took a win away, but he was worried about his reputation because him being DQ'd was plastered out there and it is what it is. Uh, but that being said, so much drama on the interwebs around that. My boy G, Uncle G, Gerald, who's one of my closest friends, y'all know that, dear friend, decided to make a video about this situation, and he had his Bassmaster rule book out, and uh, boy, it set folks on fire. <laughs> I mean, set them on fire. Lord have mercy. And then Keith made a post in rebuttal um, that – he found an old article where G had talked about jumping over into a, a beaver dam in his boat and tearing things up and whatever to get a check at, at some point. And whoever found that or how they found that, I'll be honest, it was a damn good comeback. It was a damn good comeback. Now to G's point, the rules have changed and in and, and my opinion. And uh, you know, but you gotta watch. Even one of my best friends, you got to watch Throwing Stones because I, I have to be careful. And I told him that because he, he told me he was going to make the video. I was like, well, just make sure you got your facts right just from the standpoint of, uh, you know, you're not bass and you're basically putting out a statement for bass was kind of my opinion. And, and that's what a lot of people that are on Key side have said to Gerald since then. But you got a lot of passive aggression there, right? You got Gerald saying that. Now, Gerald will talk to your face. He, he's not afraid. And I don't think Keith would be either. But it's just we live in this world, uh, and I, and look, I've stirred the pot, God knows, more than anybody. But right here, you know, on camera. But I will also, if you know me, and I feel like people do, I will also tell it right to your, uh, <laughs> right to your nose as well. Uh, I, I don't mind doing that. Never have. Never, ever, ever have. But we got a lot of passive aggression, you know, and 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 G's video was passive aggressive, and then uh, and Keith's video was super pa or uh, post was super passive aggressive, and there were a lot of passive aggressive comments back and forth, and uh, and I feel like as men they will indeed have a conversation and work that out at some point. But the Keith one, I got to talk about this first though, just because in the comments, like you can't make this up, you can't make this up. My biggest takeaway from the whole Keith Poche thing is that damn Joe Durham, his ambulance chasing ass showed up in the comments. Like, I made that joke to Keith last week. Hey, I know a lawyer from you fall Alabama. This man cannot 
Get out of his own way. And he's in the comments talking crap about Gerald, talking crap about Bass, talking crap to commenters, talking. Now, look, I'm getting it all screenshot and sent to me. I appreciate the distraction. Sometimes life gets very stressful in my day to day. I appreciate getting sent the fact that Joe Durham remains an idiot. But one of my favorite comments was that Gerald Swindle is fake, 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 fake. Coming from Joe Durham, who proclaimed to be Ryan Ingram, another person on video. And the entire bass fishing internet thinks he's a bum. <laughs> and remembers that it wasn't that long ago that he was helping his little buddy Tucker out, allegedly. And he got in trouble for lying, and this video goes crazy. And he's in the comments defending Keith, and I made a post like, Joe just out here trying to get Keith to hire him, and maybe they'll work it out. Want to be a pro, better call Joe. But sometimes, this is a fat Cat Newton line, but go lay down somewhere. You are the boss and you fall up. You should stay there and put your keyboard away, please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but uh, I think the intent of Gerald's video was was from a point of, all right, I want to explain. Been at this a long time. This is how I see it, whatever. And uh, I almost think that Bass is probably like, yeah, just stirred the pot a little bit more. There were several Elite Series anglers that Cheryl shared Gerald's thought, exactly how I think. But what gets me with fishing and this brings me back to the passive aggressive as in any other sport. Russell Lane made a post about this. JT Kenny has said this on this very show. We cover up the things we should be covering and everybody's PC and they're or PC or passive aggressive. And they're worried about sponsors because this guy's sponsored by that, or we're both sponsored by the same person. And they're all a bunch of babies <laughs> at a certain extent, because there are only a few and Gerald is one of them that will speak up. And speak out. I dare say Poche is one of those that'll speak out and speak out. And and it's it's always funny to me to see how this stuff shakes out. And you always got a bunch of like some of the ones that came at me, friends of mine even like, why'd you have Keith Poche on? Or the same ones that'll be like, I'm glad Gerald made that video. Cause they're too chick to say anything themselves. Or just go to Keith and go, hey, I think you're a piece of crap. Or, hey, I think what you did was cool. Nobody's going to talk in person. That's the world we live in, right? That's the world we live in. And uh, it's it's just, it's interesting. It's interesting to see. But, damn, if you ain't been on Bass Fish and Social Media this week, you have missed out. And another one that you missed out on, and this one, this one I really don't have a, this, this is carrying on this segment here that is, uh, is a very important segment to me. One of you turds is about to get smacked in the mouth. This is the... One of you turds is about to get smacked in the mouth. One of you turds is about to get smacked in the mouth segment right here. So we're at ledge fishing season. Let me get me a drink. We're in ledge fishing season, right? And uh, this always happens. It's always happens. I mean, you hear stories from the open down there on Wheeler. It's crowded and people are playing bumper boats. And, and there's always going to be fights and... 225 boats in the field invert, you know, the, the, the order they go out flips from day one to day two. Cause it, so if you couldn't get on something on day one and somebody caught them on it, most likely some old boy going to be sitting there and he's going to go from being 150th to being in the top 20. And that happens. It's old as time. It's old as time. And, uh, and, and I saw, I got this sent to me. I don't know any details. I don't know any details. Um, but again, I feel like, it's this passive aggression that just doesn't go away in our sport. But, and I thought it was an interesting take just after I read comments sitting on the couch. But they're smashing at Gunnersville on the Bass Pro Tour. Smashing. And Adrian Avena may, ends up making the top 10. As I record this, the, the uh, final day is going on. Made the top 10 there along with Jacob Wheeler, who's catching them, and, and uh, just just knocking them out. I think Adrian made the top ten. I should probably look at that before I say stuff I don't know about. I'm like 99% sure Adrian made the top ten. A lot of things changed at the end of the day yesterday. Let me just check that real quick because I don't want to tell tales out of school. Yes, Adrian Avena indeed 
did make the top 10. But Adrian, there was a picture of like Russ Lane and Adrian and a couple other dudes sharing a, you know, a thing. And Russ made a post like, one of these days I'm going to tell the stories from bass fishing that need to be told. Y'all deserve it as fans. And I agree. And that's what I've always tried to do on the show is tell people like, like there's, there's this side and that side and the truth somewhere in the middle. And I do tend to try to stay in the middle. I do. And just give my opinion, right, wrong, or indifferent, but also have the people on that have the stories most of the time is what I've always tried to do. But, but anyways, Dave LaFever makes a post like, well, I had a bad day because this is what pros do. Right. And, and I've been there. I've had more bad days than, than, than I haven't and uh, self-admitted and you feel this need to get on social media and be like, well, I sucked. And, and that's fine, but I also don't need a mathematical breakdown of why you sucked. You know, I don't need a, I don't need a post that says, well, I got beat. It's a numbers game. And I got beat to the only spot I found. Like, I don't need that. That happens every tournament, everywhere. Always. There's a fine line between dead last and winning at that level. I've always said that. And it's true, but Lefebvre made a post about, uh, and, and look, like I say, I have no details of this, but just from a passive aggressive, like keeping on, on, on board with that, uh, that theme is like, it seemed to me he did not reach out to Adrian. He just made this Facebook post about, well, this is the only spot I found Adrian Vina's on it. What do you guys think talking to his fans? What do you guys think I should do tomorrow? Should I start on it? Well, but saying it on Facebook and then Adrian comments and then it turns into this whole thing. And, uh, and look, maybe they sorted it out on the water. I know I saw a picture of all of them in a, in a gaggle there. It was a, a group of boats all gaggled up on a, on a spot, which tends to happen. Everything turns into a community hole when those guys are, are around, they find everything and, and they tend to work together. There are people that, uh, like the Iconelli Van Dam thing, you're not part of the community from back in the day at Chick, like that thing, that stuff exists. It drives me crazy fishing like that because I grew up on the Tennessee River and back in the day, old school, like somebody was sitting somewhere, you just didn't go there. And I understand everything changes. And, and at the professional level with live coverage and everything changing and it getting broadcast to the world that you can act like that, even though people don't realize these guys more times than not are working it out. Uh, back in the day, it was very much is about to get smacked in the mouth. whenever somebody pulled up, like it was going to be a fist fight at the ramp. I mean, seriously. And, and, and now we got a little passive aggressive pot shots going on all the time. And I just think it's like the rest of the internet. Um, and I'm a lover. Okay. Not a fighter, but I think it's like keyboard warriors and everything. Not enough people get smacked in the mouth anymore. <laughs> Like, I really believe that. Like, I think that's what's wrong with the world. It's damn sure what's wrong with professional bass fishing a lot of times because you got a lot of crap that goes on because people just get away with it. They just get away with it. And, no, I'm not saying go punch somebody in the teeth. I may be saying that. Put them in a UFC cage and let them fight it out. I'm here for it. I'll assure you if I'm trying to get on that spot and old Big Daddy Russ Lane sitting there and I roll up and they're like, okay, guys, some new crazy MLF rule that Boyd came up with, right? He's good at that. <laughs> Put them in a cage. I ain't fighting Russ. I ain't doing it. I'm going to be like, you know what? Throw your football jig in there, big dog. I'm out of here. <laughs> and I'm going to think twice before I skirt on in there. I'm damn sure going to think twice before I passive aggressively On that keyboard, <laughs> if they're like, ladies and gentlemen, before way in this morning, uh, or before blast off this morning, we'd like to gather your attention to the cage. First up from Prattville, Alabama, <laughs> Russ Lane. <laughs> and his opponent for pulling in on him yesterday and casting across his line. A hero or more. <laughs> I don't know that that happened. That was just a, that just the, that scenario in my head made sense, and it sounded hilarious. And who wins that? I don't know. You be the judge. But I'm just saying, if we got more situations like that, you probably ain't gonna be <laughs> on Facebook about where you gonna start in the morning. I know that. <laughs> I know that for damn sure. 
And uh, listen, man, I grew up on the Tennessee River with some folks. I've said that. But uh, the, like the Leon Tidwells are back in the day, and a lot of you youngins listening to this don't know any of them stories. But now listen, you, get, you would get smashed in the mouth. Now, I was a lot younger than that generation. But now you didn't go on top of somebody. That didn't happen. And now that's a little aggressive from my point of view, but it's also aggressive to roll in on somebody. Again, you got big community wads of fish that get on places, dude. It happens all the time. But but at the local level, in my opinion, they don't work it out as nice as at the pro level when the cameras are around because I've been in those situations as well. And there's a lot of cuss fights that go on, son. And sometimes it gets worse than that. I got stories, man, of some of the back in the Kentucky Lake days, people getting like – in the old ledge days, socked right in the damn mouth. I'll assure you, there's a lot of stories like that. A lot of them. So, I mean, I'm just throwing this out there to Bassmaster, MLF, MPFL. We're fishing next week at Santee Cooper. If we get anybody, the MPFL might do it. Brad Fuller and them, they might get a wrestling ring. They might get us a cage. Maybe I shouldn't have given this away to all the other tournament trails. But I say pile them up. You got, you want to protest this guy? Let's get in the cage. Let's get in the cage. Put your keyboard up, and let's get in the cage. Now, listen, I ain't going to fight nobody. Like I said, I'm a lover. I'm a lover. I get, I, get, I get a little worked up. I get a little ramped up. Y'all know that. And I, I'm not afraid to fight. Now, let's get that out there. But I ain't, I ain't looking for one, especially against somebody like Russ Lane. You gonna fight? You gonna fight Terry Scroggins? And he's got bad knees. You gonna fight Terry Scroggins? I bet somebody like Seth Fighter come up behind you and put you in a damn rear naked choke. You'd be out. He's sneaky. You know Matt Robertson ain't playing fair. You know that. It's from the streets, man. I'm just saying. Them Johnson boys, them hockey playing son of a guns, they'll fight. Guarantee it. You tell them they can have any spot they want. If a fist fight breaks out, they're going to be like, let's go, let's fist fight. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> I've heard the stories. Ain't nobody going to fight Lee Livesey. But then, you know, we can't have it turn into, I'm having to go back on my rules for my fight. You can't have it where, like, Tommy Biffle's getting picked on. You know what I mean? Like, you can't have, like, the ding squad, all four of them roll up on Tommy and be like, you're going to give us a spot. And he's like, well, you know the cage match deal, and then it's a four-on-one. It's like WWF Survivor Series at that point. We can't be having all that. We can't be having all that. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. It just this is, I'm being silly, obviously, but, like, that is my point is that's how silly all of this is. These are grown-ass men. Just talk. Just talk. Just talk. Like, talk it out. Figure it out. Or fight it out. Whatever. Whatever. So, Boyd, if you're listening, it's a free idea, bud. It's a free idea. Listen, you're, everybody in the sport of bass fishing, they're always wanting to grow the sport. Hell, let's grow it. Let's grow it. Let's make this thing NASCAR. Somebody walked up and get smacked in the mouth with a flipping stick live. Did that ever happen in bass fishing? No. Would it be awesome? Yes. Dude, somebody double choked up pow, with a flipping stick one time. You coming in here? You think you're going to come fish out here? Ah, I'm here for it. Let's go. Instead of, I'm going to start here and have my lawyer with me. His name is Joe. He's the boss of you, Fala. <laughs> what are we doing? It's almost as silly as Boyd Duckett fishing on Gunnersville during the off limits and only giving himself a little... 10 minutes, 10 minutes, freaking time out. 10 minutes, Boyd went crappie fishing on Gunnersville during the off limits for Gunnersville and gave himself a 10 minute penalty. Now, granted, he's 95th out of 80 in the Angler of the Year standings and he owns the company. Nobody can say a damn thing. But the idea that everybody. <laughs> Has to play by the rules. And that's the penalty you got just because it was crappie fishing or just because you're buoyed or just because of whatever. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Because I dare say I feel like if 
if if you know Dave Lefebvre had been out there during the off limits, he probably would have been disqualified. <laughs> oh man, I was just brim fishing. Oh, that's okay, man. You just gonna sit for ten minutes. <laughs> What? They they penalize them two minutes if a fish falls off the hook into the floor of the boat. And they immediately have to give it mouth to mouth and then sit down for two minutes. And if you're on the water during the off limits, even if you're crappie fishing, you can see water temp, water level, you can graph, you can see things going on, okay? <laughs> Ten minute penalty. <laughs> For the entire event. No weight penalty. No, you're disqualified. He just sipped on his black rifle coffee or whatever on the general tire breakdown. In the first... <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? And you want to know why people get outraged when somebody gets disqualified? It's because nobody ever gets disqualified. <laughs> it's like the Sprague thing. He didn't get disqualified until, uh-oh, it got posted on a damn fake internet page. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? I don't know. We're having a good time today. That's what we're doing. We're fixing to call our guest. He's a man that uh, he all this drama I'm talking about. The segment. Let, let's close it out with this, just because I, I like I like this. That was your. Turns is about to get smacked in the mouth. Brought to you by Trocar. Because <laughs> get it, Trocar smacks him in the mouth. Uh, this is a man right here. We finna get the sauce from him presented by the W sauce America's Worcestershire Shire sauce. Got that new breakfast sauce coming as well. And, uh, had a dose of that this morning on them eggs. And it's always, dude, I've had it on burritos. I had it on French fries the other night. Also, uh, in case you're wondering, I don't have abs. I don't have abs. Uh, but this man is the exact opposite of everything I'm talking about. He is, he is, uh, Cooler than the other side of the pillow. He sticks to himself. He's a great dude that uh, drama is about as far from his name as you will ever hear. Uh, been wanting to have him on for a while now, and I've known him for many years. Very fortunate to know this, this, this guy. I would say young man. He's not that much younger than me. Like six years younger than me. The young guys are turning into the veterans, as Luke Palmer said. But he is currently leading the Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year race headed to the Sabine River. He's having a fantastic season, which he tends to do. He has 700000 just shy of $700,000 in career earnings, two wins, 49 times in the money out of 60 events, okay? 49 out of 60. We're going to get him on the phone right now. Brandon Cobb. Brandon Cobb, good morning. Welcome to Low Visit Live, buddy. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm just hanging out at the house. It's like I like I text you yesterday when we we're putting this together. I'm like, how are you doing? Other than the fact that you're just like kicking everybody's teeth in on that old Bassmaster Elite series so far. Like I know you're doing good, right? I mean, you you got to be feeling it right now. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty good. It's like. I don't even know how it's got. You know the terms I'm talking about where you like look back at the day, you're like, man, that was a good decision to go do that mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just happened like the whole year. Mm. That's like, like, like making good decisions and like I, it, it's the fish have been in the right stage though for me. You know, ever, I mean, ever since I've, I mean, any, since I fished BFLs and since FLW and since, since all that, I've always been better at like that spawn. Pre -spawn, or immediate pre yeah, yeah 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 like immediate pre-spawn or immediate like right before spawn spawn and then right after spawn and that's like our whole season's been that <laughs> yeah i, I would but. agree but you've also you've you've historically to be uh from the part of the world you're from and be a blueback chaser you're a, you're a hard yeah. guy you're great on those lakes obviously great on murray uh but to have that that kind of background but you've also always i remember back dating back to fishing on the tour against you, you seem like you always figured Florida out too. Like Florida's always, so I think that, you know, that certainly helped yeah. this year starting down there too, I would say, because you, you've you've had success on Okeechobee. I, I can remember you catch them on the Harris chain really well. 
Um, yeah, yeah. The Okeechobee was actually, I was a little worried about that because I hadn't fished Okeechobee back since the tour days. Okay. And and Okeechobee, I never got a check for. Oh, okay. I thought you and, always but, caught them there. I thought that. No, I, I well, just assumed I caught them like one day. <laughs> but, uh, but so Florida, I actually, I actually did figure Florida out. I, I, well, I'm going to say I figure it out. I started doing pretty well in Florida and uh, everywhere else, but I hadn't been to Okeechobee since I kind of started understanding florida if that yeah. makes sense yeah yeah so so then i went back and it yeah it, it went pretty good but i actually oh shane that one too because uh we had a few different areas i caught some fish in other places too and then that i kind of he found like you know how florida goes you find like a big area where you're like i think there's fish in here and you just kind of mill around all day mm-hmm. well the one area where i caught a lot of fish he uh he found the area and was like i think there's fish here and me and him both went to it about midday the first day and then I just found a little, a little like sweet spot in the area. So I mean, it works good to have somebody, somebody you kind of practice with in Florida, like Shane. Well, especially when it's, when it's Mr. LaHue and you guys both, I feel like y'all think a lot alike and y'all are both like fish vacuums. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, I never wanted to, uh, I never wanted to see y'all in an area when I was on the tour. I was like, Oh boy, Oh boy. There's not going to be a lot left here. Uh, and we, also we got a pretty good routine. Going. Y- y'all do y'all, y'all definitely do. And it's working, man. It's working for both of you this year for sure. Uh, but I, I actually had that in my notes and, and it's interesting that you started with that by saying, you know, those tournaments where you're just like, Oh wow, that decision worked or that decision didn't <laughs> when you're looking back. But I was actually going to ask what changes, because you're always consistent. I mean, as far as Bassmaster stats are concerned, 49 times out of uh, in the money out of 60 events you're very consistent you were always consistent with flw i feel like you always figure out a way to get by to get checks uh, when it when it comes down to it but i was going to ask that what do you feel like this year is it is it that schedule kind of setting up more because look i talked about this with luke palmer the other day there seems to be this season. Look at the top five, other than John Cox, because he's an old fart like me. I, I, mm-hmm. I got to say that. But it's a it's a younger crowd, and you're not too. I mean, you're what thirty three? Yeah, I'm thirty three. So I mean, you're you're not a I'm 33, baby. But I've just been doing it. Longer you've been doing than it. For, that's right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You've been doing it for a very very long time. But uh, but there seems to be this year, man. We don't see that. Brandon Polinick up there leading. We don't we don't see that Gerald Swindle up there in the top ten. Now, he, you know that that veteran guy, so to speak. And you guys are now the veterans. That was Luke Palmer's point. And I was like, damn, you're right. You guys have been doing mm-hmm. it for so long now. You are veterans. But what is it for you though that you think is the recipe for being being in that AOI lead headed to Sabine? Uh, like for at least for me for my success this year, it's been just like doing what I want to on the water. Like, like if we get somewhere like Seminole, for instance, it was one, you know, live scoping out in the middle of the trees in 20 foot of water. Joey did that. And a lot of people call him like that. And I just said, you know what? It's March. <laughs> they got to be on the bank. I don't yes. care if I'm going to bite all practice. I'm fishing a frog. I'm throwing a wacky worm. I'm flipping. I'm swimming a jig. Like, I'm not going to even look for that. I'm not even like, that's not what I'm going to try to do. And, and the whole season I've had enough confidence at something I like to do, Mm -hmm. whether it's really working or not. I'm like, well, the, this time of year, there's no way it's not what, like, like lay Lake was a prime example. I love fishing brim beds and sight fishing, obviously too. Oh yeah. And I practiced and didn't really do that much shallow, but it was like one of those things I could see a bunch of brim beds. I could see a fish on bed here and there every now and then I'm like, you know, it's not that good shallow, but I think there's enough. I can, I can get a check is what I thought. And I just kind of stuck to what I wanted to do rather than going to try to, you know, go catch spots on some of those bars or fish brush piles or timber, like majority of the field did. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's kind of like that. That's what's been good. There's tournaments though. Like I, I haven't had doubts this year in, I could catch some doing what I want because of the schedule. It's a lot of it. Like all the lakes you just, it, it i've known that what i want to do can work when you get some weird places like you, you know the feeling you're going somewhere you have no idea about or it's a weird time of year you're like yeah i don't know is there enough shallow you know yeah like, like that i've just kind of had confidence in all of them that there is i i love what you said about 
and I just because I love the live scope debate from so many people and the forward facing <laughs> sonar deal. I mean, I I love it. I like to do it, but I'm also born and bred to be a bank beater. <laughs> Like, I'm always going to be that. I want to look at them like you. I want to be throwing a topwater. I want to be whacking or whatever. That's what I want to do. And I love that because me and Brad and I have this conversation all the time. It's like, when did bass fishing stop being bass fishing, right? Mm -hmm. And it is like, yeah, Joey won out there. But you know what? I don't want to go do that at Seminole in March, dude. I don't. Like, I want to go be exactly. in them damn lily pads and in them reeds and up here in them stumps. Like, that's what I want to be doing. Now, granted – it, it paid off for him and it's paid it off did. for Tyler event down at, you know, at Okeechobee. Okay, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. Cause I know you're good with it too. You fish those blue back hair and you got to be good mm -hmm. at it, but mm -hmm. there's something about, you know what, by George, it's, it, I, we're at Lake Murray. I should be able to go throw a daggum spook or a pencil popper or whatever, whatever, and catch them, dude. Like I love, yeah, I yeah. love that approach, man. And so sticking to your guns, this, you know, up to this point and dude, you, you, you guys, what we got Sabine, and then we kind of make that swing, kind of make yeah, the uh, the northern that's deal. That's scary swing. Scary swing. <laughs> what? So even fishing with confidence, though, I mean, you and Shane, you boys have caught him up there. Y'all, y'all got uh, that dialed up a little bit. I feel like at times. Yeah, we have. We Shane is way more consistent up there than I am. I've I've done well. Like I, it's not that I always do poorly up north, but it's like. I'm kind of like I was on in Florida back when I first started the tour hit or miss. Like, like I, I'm, I'm, I could be really like, I've done really, really bad, but I've also dang near top 10 up there. And it's just our top 10. So it's, it's kind of like, I'm still inconsistent up North just cause I don't. And it's a lot of, it comes down to the sonar stuff. Like you said, I can, I can do it. I'm confident. You have to know how to do it around here, For sure. but I don't like it. It's not my, it's not fun to me. Yeah, it's not so, your so, it, so you, you're gonna be better at anything you like really, really like doing. Yeah, no, oh, there's no doubt so, about it. And, and up there is dominated with it. So, well, before you get there, though, we got this, and and everybody, I think, on the elite series and fans alike have this one circled because no fans want anybody <laughs> to go there. I feel like to the Sabine, and that's the overwhelming feeling. I. I'm glad I'm not having to fish it, but I like watching those events. <laughs> like I, I enjoy watching you boys struggle. I got to watch y'all catch the crap out of them at Murray while I was here at the house, like having to pressure wash and do crap. Like, like I don't care that you have to deal with the Sabine river, but uh, I like watching it as long as it's not on a schedule. If Bill Taylor had ever, Hey, we're going to the Sabine river. I would have been out. I would have quit like, right then, you know, but, uh, but before we go North though, my point is that's a, that's an interesting venue, mm -hmm. and is that one for you in this thing? And I know it's early, man, but five events, you got the lead, you've been around it the whole year. Is this a is this kind of the pivotal event before it makes a turn, though? I know we're kind of looking up north and talking about success, but is Sabine, in your mind, points-wise, this is kind of going to be one of the major deciding factors? Yeah, I mean, everyone's important, but right. definitely – because it's one of the last ones in the south i definitely want to do well there because yeah. i have i have more confidence at the sabine yeah. than i do up north but like actually it's funny you like everybody makes fun of the sabine i freaking love it that's awesome okay. it's like my, but i mean i'm not saying like like it's definitely a place you go zero like easy. for sure but, for but sure it's, it's like my favorite style of fishing see what a lot of people don't know like the last like seven eight nine years what I do in the, like, come September, August, uh, we generally sell our boats, right? We don't have mm -hmm. them. So I got a 15-foot uh, tiller steer, John boat. Cool. With a with a, with a 25 horsepower on it, and that's all I do is river fish. Okay. In, in the fall, uh, late summer and fall. So I got to where, like, I put a Zoom Z crawl on the deck and a buzz bait, and I just go so after it. Fish. That's all I bring, and I flip like just learn how to like read like the holes and rivers and stuff and that's kind of what sabine is on a much much massive massive scale yes big yes. bigger scale but and the fish are small but it's uh it's fun like i i, I thoroughly enjoy it so you're kind of in that I mean, you're. I'm gonna start calling you a sneakier Keith Boche. You've got you <laughs> you've got a yeah. you've got a boat. Yeah. You're just not doing backflips and and motorcycle tricks in it, huh? <laughs> that, that's right. Yeah. No, I, I love the river river fishing stuff. I just uh, 
Generally, generally, we don't have a tournament where it's like a winning viable option. Yeah. Well, and 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 it's too bad that we don't like you said that fall time frame. I know fans are like, oh, I don't want to see one where Brandon Cobb wins with twelve pounds a day in <laughs> September. But dude, those are those, those are the, those are the good ones. ones. Yes. Yeah, that's what I, I know. Fans hate it because they're like, oh, all they can catch is two pounds. Right. It, right. Fans just don't really get the. Uh, uh, sometimes they don't get like that. A two pounder is a big one. That's right. Like that, it's just where you're fishing, and that's right. That's what makes the Sabine fun to me. And the Sabine gets a bad rap. Like at least last time we were there, I've only been the other time, but it's not as bad as it looks for catching fish. It's a lot of bites. You actually catch a good many fish. Yeah, lots they're of bites. just itty bitty. And a three, a three <laughs> like I actually go down gold. my flipping setup. Really? I usually flip like a seven five around here, and like twenty pound test. You know, there I go to like a seven two or seven three with 15 pound test because you always fly them over the boat <laughs> and you're like god i needed that pound I, I needed that one six that just flew over us. <laughs> you can't you can't be yanking the flyers out they got to go in the box yeah. <laughs> you're a leading you angler of the year <laughs> can't get down a little bit you're like man they went a one six i really needed him he landed in the other bushes over there <laughs> landed you better don't throw him to john cox or kyle welcher <laughs> You can't yeah. don't throw them over your shoulder. <laughs> Boys will scoop them up like a damn eagle. <laughs> that's, that's amazing, right. dude. Man, you're so right, though. You get used to the big fish that you you catch, especially this year, man. With like y'all having Murray, Okeechobee, Murray, Seminole, Santee, like all these stacked up events. And when you set the hook, nothing moves a lot of times. Yep, but they uh, there'll be some movement down there at the Sabine. <laughs> <laughs> the Sabine, yeah, flying fish. I might wear a helmet. I, I, I told my. I told my marshal last time he might want to bring a helmet. If you make the top ten, please promise all the low lifers that listen to the show that you will wear a baseball helmet with a face guard on it that these kids have to wear in T ball now. <laughs> that far out, eleven inches. Yeah, just and just like have your matrix, you just moving left and right, just dodging fish. I love, I love that thought. I actually, I was fishing on Friday here at the house with a big weight down on down on Wilson. And uh, some of our river grass, willow grass is uh, kind of matted up in places. And, mm-hmm. and uh, I can't drive by that and not insert something <laughs> into that. Like I just genetically, like I can't. So, cause I went down there, I was going to fish offshore and then I'm like, Ooh, never mind. And uh, <laughs> cause I'm like you, I'm like, dude, it's still May and it's been cold more than it has. And I'm going to get flipped. So I went and flipped and the first bite I had, it's the first bite I've had doing that this year. And this poor little joker, just like you're saying, and I'm like, cause we catch good, you know, you catch good ones doing it. So I got yeah, like yeah. 65 braid and a 710, whatever. And dude, and this poor little sucker, I have a buddy of mine with me. And he's like, really? Because I mean, I just threw the coals to it and here it comes right out of that grass. Like it never just just slung it. So yeah, downsizing is important on the Sabine. <laughs> it's important. If you need those little ones, you don't want to, you don't want to go find them. That is, uh, <laughs> that is so true, man. That is so true. I, I have fished, uh, I've talked about it on here multiple times. There's, there's a small lake. And uh, the tournament trail actually got canceled. But I, during COVID, I fished this deal, and it's this lake that's a, it's a kind of a private deal. And there'll be 40 boats, like a club deal, and it paid really good money. And it's trolling mm-hmm. motor only. It's crazy. So my son and I fished them. And, dude, if you catch a 12-incher, it's so tough. You catch a lot of 10 inches. If you catch a 12 incher, the guy running the tournament hands you a hundred dollar bill. So you catch a keeper, you get paid up, right? And it's like a $20 yeah. entry fee. It's a thousand dollars to win. And it'll take like five that weigh six pounds to win. Like every single one, yeah. so, the most fun that I've ever had bass fishing. We fished like eight of them and you're like, Oh gosh, Oh gosh. Is he 11 and three quarter? Is he 12? Like we got to have them. And dude, I have yanked them out of the boat though. I got to swim in a jig down, down there one day. There was a shad spawn and it got up and dirty and there's grass. And I'm like, immediately pick up my, my swim jig with my super speed crawl and I'm going at it. And dude, I yank, like I lost the tournament for us. Like you yank it. <laughs> 12 flying inches. Them. Yeah, I was flying them. You can't do that with a big swim jig hook. Like they just get off. <laughs> uh, see, that's what, I think a lot of people like that you're talking about there is kind of like what the Sabine's like. And a lot of people haven't fished tournaments on places like that that's very right. much to see. Like it's fun. It like, is fun. It's a mental. I mean, it, it can it can beat you up, I guess, and mm-hmm. um, and I, I get it from a fan standpoint. But I think back to like Christie's crazy win there and his big run. But then I think to like yep. Caleb Summerall heartbreaker, like trying to flip in a three pounder, yep. you know, and, and you realize how important that fish is. It's not like it? yep. oh, there's another five pounder around the corner. There's not, you mm-hmm. know, to to make up for those losses. So it makes everything matter that Important. that yeah that much more the, man the one problem there is the long run see i'm not a long run guy 
Okay. Like, like we go somewhere, like, it's like, I travel with Patrick a lot. And I'm like, Patrick, where are you going today in practice? He's like, I think I'm going three states <laughs> over. I think it connects. Listen. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That is so true about freaking Walters. So yep. true. He's fishing MPFL, and I'm like interviewing him last year. He called him at, I think we were at uh, maybe Saginaw Bay, and he's and he had had a good first day, and I call him. I'm like quizzing him up, you know, for live. I'm like, all right, dude, what's – and he's like, I don't know. If the wind don't blow, I'm thinking about going 379 miles one way away from where I called him today. And I'm like, what? why? He's like, I don't know. I couldn't get there today. <laughs> no, you're right. Like, he's all about that life. But Brandon Cobb yeah. is not – I'll, no, I appreciate I'm, like, that. I, I'm actually really sad that I didn't find what Polinick found at Lake. Cause I'm like, man, that's me. 75 <laughs> yards from the boat ramp. Like, dude, no kidding. It was, <laughs> yeah. I, I hated to see him get beat just because he fished that so perfect in my opinion. Like that was like did. Did. old school bass fishing with some new school mixed in obviously yep. with technology, <laughs> but right yep. there in beeswax, man, he just, he never <laughs> left. Yeah. That, that's my, like, that's my deal. I love being close and like, I just fish better when I don't have to make long runs. And, uh, that's the problem with Sabine. Sabine, you about, I mean, you can fish close, but like a lot of the fish are going to be caught, you know, 75, hundred miles away. How do you make that call though? That's what always frustrated me with situations like, which we weren't put in a ton of those situations, I guess with FLW, but I'm just saying for me, even with a ton of tournament experience in my life, um, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know how you attack that. Like the Sabine would be a, a mind game for me <laughs> to the nth degree. Cause I'm like, well, where do I even start practice? Yeah. Then, and that's, it was, it, or it is, but it's kind of what I was saying. What I ended up doing last time is I picked one of the main like areas, rivers that, you know, people have had success I in, in you. the past. If you look at like local tournaments, like where the ramps they go out of, you know, yeah, stuff like that. And I just picked the area. And said, you know, I think there's enough fish here to do well. I'm gonna spend three days here. Okay, so that's you just uh, kind of lock it down in one general. Yeah, I, I, and and I'm not saying I'm spending three days in you know five miles. I'm saying I'm spending three days in 35, 40 miles. Right. Like, that's still a lot of water, but oh yeah, but but it's like I, I'm not. I don't try to practice everywhere necessarily, and, and it can bite you because every now and then, you know, especially on big fisheries, there's just an area that's like come way in time. You find out top ten, you're like, God dang, the whole top ten is <laughs> each other. <laughs> yeah, those are those are never fun surprises, are they? Yeah, yeah, never yeah. fun. So surprises. it happens, but but when there's a place that big, you just get yourself. Well, if you end up practicing everywhere, you end up with one or two places everywhere. You think you might catch some, and then you can't even fish them all. Yeah, you get real spread out. And I know, man, the first time they went there years ago, there were guys running to like. I don't know, freaking Corpus Christi, Houston. Texas, or something yeah, crazy. They, yeah, I don't they know, run through Houston, the Galveston yeah. Bay and all uh, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's just in bass boats. And I know you run a good one, and I run a good one. They're not made for that kind of <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> our crap will break. Our screws that hold the trolling motors down, our bolts, <laughs> our graph mounts are great, but they don't. Galveston Bay, they, they're not made for bass boats. It's not. No, and and go spearing a wave and saltwater ain't real great for all your tackle either. No, goodness gracious, <laughs> no. I can remember Anthony Gag already years ago they had one an flw on the pascagoula river in mississippi and they were running out of pascagoula into the gulf of mexico and Mm -hmm. i think scott martin actually won this but they ran down the beach and then back up into mobile bay to get into the alabama river to catch them is where the the, the bass fishing was going on and i'll never forget gagley already telling me that he almost hit a dolphin like he almost hit flipper one morning (laughs) in the fog like literally almost ran and his ranger almost killed a dolphin. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, that's see, not I'm supposed not, to happen. <laughs> no, I don't like that. That's that's the Cooper River Winyah Bay system in South yes. Carolina. The same way. I just I'm like, I just don't like that. That's long that long run, risky runs. I don't like it. Well, and I think that speaks to your consistency too, though, right? Because if yeah. you're not swinging on those big long runs, you're not risking the mechanical failures that can happen with that, <laughs> and you're putting points on the board. You're putting putting yeah. fish on the scales every day, and that's what you got to do, obviously. Yeah, and you're banking on the weather being perfect when you do something like that. That's true. Because like wind blows, you can't make it. So yeah, I I, I know it's like there's a lot of places like that up north too. You win by doing those long runs, but yeah. you have to have a lot of things go right to. <laughs> Four days, four days of yeah. perfection, really. I mean, yeah, I, like yeah the, really. Those runs that Atkins was making, 
a few years ago and, and several guys like that. That's a, that's a, you know, put on your big boy pants and run and just pray <laughs> that it's going to be okay to get there yeah. and back. Right. Like it just, uh, that's right. And, and that they bite in two hours. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's the, the time constraint. I'm already ahead case enough with eight hours with two is, uh, is, is frustrating. Well, does Shane like to make long runs though? Will he, he make that uh, run? He is more like he will more so than me, but he's very similar to me. Kind of doesn't he doesn't he doesn't take those huge risks a lot. Me and Shane fish. It's actually useless us practicing together, trying to like help each other because we fish like the same thing. I'll be like Shane, I just caught some off docks, man, and he's like, oh really? Okay, and then he'll call me and he's like, oh, I just shook off three on docks. He's like, there's this one with a little brush pile with a canoe sitting on top. I'm like Shane, I already fished those. That's where I caught them. We got the whole lake, Shane. How'd you fish the same docks as me? We don't even the exact same three docks. I believe it. So it's our our prize. I mean, it works good, but it also kind of sucks because we just end up finding the same thing without telling each other. Yeah. Do you ever have those moments when you run into each other on the same stretch? Like you've been talking, you've been game planning, and then y'all start on the same thing. You're like, oops. (laughs) Y'all ever have that? Well, usually, I mean, (laughs) usually we know, but in practice, I've literally been talking to him on the phone before. Like, I think I'm catching some doing this and you come around the corner and like, he's right there. (laughs) Dang it, Shane. We're on the same bank. You're like, don't throw, don't throw your buzzer over there, Shane. I already shook three. I already showed it to him. (laughs) Yeah, Wesley and I were like that at times, and and you know I'd be like, dude, this this deal's going on up shallow, and then you look up and he's coming around the same deal, and you're like, N- hey, no, go somewhere else and do that. This is where I found it because you don't say the name of the creeks necessarily. Like I wouldn't tell him. I'd be like, dude, I'm doing this. These docks four to six feet. Blah 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 blah. Skipping my chatterbait, and then here he comes. And you're like, how did you know that? Do you have my location? Why are you here? Because what? again. He's a lot better fisherman than me, obviously. I didn't need him around beating mine up. <laughs> I needed him to be somewhere else, somewhere giving me else. my space, man. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've got it working pretty well, but sometimes it's just like, well, we might as well just practice together because that was pointless to be in separate boats. <laughs> I think that that's a, that's a huge benefit, though, man, and you guys have always – put that together and and I, I think it's it is a blessing and a curse I guess I, I agree with you on having similar styles but also I think it just helps you guys be able to cover that much more water in the time you're allotted you know especially at a place like Sabine yeah. where you're talking about like because you know if he, he can go a little further than you maybe or you can try mm-hmm. a different area and you guys can spread out and having that trust in somebody is very important because I, I think maybe listeners don't understand that too is having somebody that has your back and there are a lot of those little clicks out there and I don't say click in a negative way. I mean that do work together and that is so important, Mm -hmm. man. Like it is, it's, it's very important. Trying to do it by yourself can be a nightmare. Um, no, at is. times there are people that pull it off they keep to themselves they talk to their wife or girlfriend or whoever at the end of the day their kids and that's it they keep to themselves and they find it but i think to really be consistent on these bodies of water because look you're leading angler of the year and you're you're fantastic but you're not always going to land on them. you're going to have those no. weeks you don't find them right so it's good it, and and if shane doesn't then that sucks too <laughs> but <laughs> if we both fail then uh yes. yeah but being able to put the puzzle together with somebody you can trust and, and being able to lean on somebody because people get burned. I know you've heard the stories over the years. I mean, it, it oh, certainly yeah. happens, right? People get a little yeah. thirsty. Oh, they get a little anxious at times, and a lot of friendships have been ruined. That's for sure. It has. I think we've been we've been kind of working together for nine years. So I think I think we pretty much got it figured out at this point. No but doubt. It's a, the biggest thing we were talking about earlier is we were talking about, you know, some lakes you just find out like God leave the whole top tens in one area. Mm-hmm. That's what we like. That's what kind of me and him used to kind of, kind of the practicing together, talking during practice thing the most far is a lot of times we'll actually purposely put in kind of in the same area in practice. And fish like opposite ways in the same area. If neither one of us catch, let's just say a lake with a bunch of rivers, things yeah. like that. You know, if neither one of us catch anything by like ten o'clock, I'll call him and be like, "Shane, I ain't no bite. I ain't either." I'm like, well, this river sucks. Let's go to another one. Yeah, no, that's, that's smart. <laughs> like so, it definitely it definitely helps to yeah. have somebody. Yeah, somebody that you can trust is is uh, always always a good thing out there. So, I, I talked about this before i before i called you I, I was on a pretty good rant and ramble about uh all the drama and bass fishing i actually described you as a guy that is very uh the opposite of drama <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> to be. do you have a take on some of the craziness that has happened on the internet <laughs> this week between 
Gerald calling out Keith, Keith calling out Gerald. Yeah. You got Adrian Avina yeah. and Dave Lefebvre calling each other out. Do you think, Brandon Cobb, that we should have a UFC ring at the, uh, you know, on the dock? And if you're going to pull in on somebody, you got to fight them. What do you think about that? That was my proposed thing. At very minimum, a table for arm wrestling. <laughs> yes! There we go! <laughs> very <Yes>! minimum. <laughs> like and then you don't worry about hurting your knuckles, you know, to cast. You know, just, just a good arm wrestle. <laughs> just a, even a pillow fight. Even a pillow yeah. fight. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I was way more violent than you before I got you on, and that's fine. I'm I'm a little ramped up this morning about everything I've read and, and seen. But, yeah, there we go. Bassmaster, MLF, MPFL, if you're listening to me and Brandon Cobb here right now, free idea. If you go over here and work it out, like your teacher used to go, you guys are going to sit here in the hallway and stare at each other until you become best friends again, Shane and Brandon. You're not going to fight anymore. And they put you together <laughs> nose to nose in the hallway, and by the end of it, you either had to be friends or you hated each other more, even though you <laughs> faked it for the teacher. I think Bass, MLF, and MPFL. Hey, you you know what? Get over here right now. I, th I think that uh, we live stream it, pay-per-view. Now, look. You're not the biggest guy in the world, but you're no. also not somebody that I ever hear is out there cutting folks off. So you're probably going to be safe, but you like me, you're probably going to be a little pickier about where you fish if you got to try to roll in on somebody <laughs> that's like six that's four right. or something, right? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, man. There's, yeah, you know, like, that, that's Keith Combs right there. I'm just going around. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't fishing that brush pot, Keith. You're good. You're good. That was the only spot I had. Have a good week. I'm gonna go over here and eat a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> let me know when you're done yeah just like hey hey here's my you still got my number just yeah just let me know <laughs> i love this see right there ladies and gentlemen i set up this entire scenario of my new way to fig figure out this passive aggressive world we live in with social media right here in an elite series the angler of the year leader right now agrees with it we just got to work it yeah. out Work it out right. a little bit. I love it, man. Yeah. And, well, another thing, though, all this drama has always sort of been a thing. So for sure. Makes it a thousand times worse. So you see it. Yes. The, 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 because we do all feel the need for this. Um, some. I, I, you're definitely not one of these guys at all because you just you just want to be bass fishing. You're like yeah. you're you're very much just want to go catch a bass. But there's this need to. Hey, I had a bad day. And here's why it's because this guy was on this spot. <laughs> like there's a lot of that that goes on now. And I'm like, you didn't yeah. have to explain that. We don't need no. a recap here. No. Hear me out. Ladies and gentlemen, if you finish 119th in an open, we don't need a recap. It was a no. sucky week. I get it. Clearly things didn't go well. It's okay. I don't need to hear what you found in practice and it didn't work. Out. I've not called them more than I've called them. You don't need a recap from me on why that happened. <laughs> Now, is there a fine line between 100th place and winning sometimes? Absolutely. It can yeah. be. It can be. But can be. It, we don't need a recap video. <laughs> no. I think you would agree with that, Brandon Cobb. Yep. Uh, yep. As much as I love you and you and Shane's content, y'all don't catch them. We don't, it's okay. I'm not mad yeah. at you for not catching them. I'm more along the line of rather than making excuses, you just might be like, did Brandon not, he, he forget his password for social media or something? <laughs> like, if I don't do good at tournament, like, dang, he posted, he, he said he was in fifth the first day, then I don't know where he finished. So let me look. Oh, he's in 70th. That's because he zeroed the next two days. No, he, he just didn't post nothing. <laughs> that is the Luke Duncan way. Just disappear. Like, we can go, hey, going out boat number 74 in the open tomorrow, and then you're like 180th, and it's like, Crickets. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I'm pissed off. Don't make me tell you why I sucked. I don't want to tell you why I sucked. <laughs> what? I didn't, I, I didn't fish a tournament last week. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Oh, I had, I had COVID, man. I, no, I thought yeah. COVID was over. Nope. I had it. No. Nope. I had it. I was home. <laughs> I was home playing video games. I didn't. I wasn't even at Sabine River. I don't know. What you're so about. funny, man. It is true though. But uh, <laughs> but you're right. It, it, the drama has certainly always been there. Whether it's somebody starting somewhere, somebody oh, I was here yesterday. I'm leading. You're not. Blah 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 blah. That stuff's always happened. But now we do have this. And then what? What really stirs it up? And look, man. I'm I'm six years going into my sixth year doing this, covering the sport, kind of trying to be an independent. You know bring mm -hmm. it to the people like what goes on what doesn't a little bit and talking to guys like yourself that are that are at the top of their game and uh and and there is this 
level of exposure that does happen now, whether it be you think back to the Ufala, the uh, the crazy lawyer thing, like mm-hmm. GoPros are everywhere. So now right. it's like, oh yeah, that didn't happen. Well, let me just push play. <laughs> so there's oh, what did I do? yeah, and there was one. Um, I forgot from Lay. Somebody cut somebody off. I can't even remember who it was. I got sent the clip. It was pretty blatant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard crazy. about it. Yeah. I don't know exactly who it was. Yeah, I don't know I who saw, it was. I, I saw a clip. About. I can't remember who it was. I've seen a lot of crap this week, but uh, yeah. and I don't know that it ever got posted social. But it's like you can't hide from anything. If you're going to be a turd head, people are going to. And but then it fuels this. You got commenters that based on and fans they don't know the, the yeah, criteria they don't know the, the scenario con- the context right yeah, anything yeah. now there's certain things going back to the ufala thing just because it makes me laugh is like there's no way to take that out of context that was just <laughs> no, no, crazy no. that was just <laughs> that was crazy pretty yeah, i was pretty yeah. dialed in to just cause some nutty behavior right but yeah. there's certain things like all right well what's the context of this and if someone is a fan of brandon cobb and you say and it's the then same they thing support when, you. yeah then they support <laughs> you and if they're a fan of whoever they're going to support them so that's what you run run into and then it causes this yep. divisiveness for sure yep. but uh you know we've got the cure we've got the cure. M- most of it a lot of it comes down to I, a lot of people probably don't realize this but like in the pro tournaments the way the takeoffs work is the yeah. first day your boat so and so and then the second day it completely flips yeah, so somebody one, leading the tournament mm-hmm. might be like boat 100 the next day yep and then it does that on purpose. So if you get beat to your spot the first day you can get it the second day. Yeah. But it kind of sucks because it's kind of got to be a like, like a morals thing that if somebody's leading, you don't go to that spot. Yeah. But it's kind of like, well, I tried to go to it the first day, and he's leading. But like, <laughs> that's what comes down to an issue. That's when that's when the drama begins because there's always been that unwritten rule of, okay, well, Brandon's leading. He started on my goods go. yesterday. I didn't get on it because I was about hundred. I'm about one today. Should I go? Because I, I could be yeah. leading. And 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 to me, you're a guy that would air away from that yeah. i've always been that yeah. even if you know i'm not aggressive i never was not aggressive enough at times i would say yeah. you yeah. know just seeing how people act but I, I wasn't raised that way uh that's what i was talking about before this like seeing gaggles of boats like this community hole stuff you see on gunnersville like vpt right now dude somebody somebody was going to tow a butt kick in, in those situations <laughs> 20 years ago like seriously yeah. like i've seen it at the boat ramp like yeah. i've just seen it in ledge stuff because it's just, I don't know. It's, it's crazy to me. Now look, and a lot of times with you guys, y'all work it out and there's agreements and different things that, that do happen. There are also a lot of disagreements, no. but, uh, yeah, there's, but, but yeah, the inverted field thing is certainly, I think it plays more and you can probably speak to this, but I think it plays more in the opens and that yeah. 225, you know what I mean? Those big, yeah, big when the fields. Field's so big and yeah. you don't know a lot of the guys. Yeah. I think that yeah. really is where you get a lot of that with it, you guys. It doesn't really work on the elites yeah. because you're still kind of screwed. It, I, I've always said that I think that should be random the first day and then that's just it. Like then you take off in your boat number oh. or what place you're in. I think only the first day should be random because it doesn't work. Like you I said, like, that. like, I like because that. just because I'm boat five, I'm still not going to take a spot that somebody was catching them on you know yeah <laughs> like I agree the second that. day so. that's a really yeah. good idea then you know your number for the rest it's based on performance after that yeah i think so i mean it would kind of suck if you're like just well i mean but it's it's every tournament you're not gonna be last the whole year because they move it you know yeah yeah so but like it caused two also the inverted field doesn't really work very well because like murray for instance it was a heron bite and it was hard to get on places right oh yeah and uh i was like boat 50 so I was about 50 by both day. days. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get the benefit <laughs> so, of it ever. Yeah. So that's why I was like, well, that sucks. that's, that's when I came up with the idea. Like, man, I wish it'd just take <laughs> off and place you're in. Cause I was in like eighth or something the first day. I'm like, I'm like, well, I would have been 50th. Then I would have took off eighth. If day two, we just took off by boat number. We do on day three, but not day two. That's right. See, that's, that is, uh, that's the same way with like MPFL does all tournament trails. They go by order on the final day. But the first mm-hmm. two days are in. Yeah, that's a really, really freaking good point. I've never thought about it, that. I get the theory of why you invert yeah, it. It's yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. P- people with like the code of conduct, you don't pull up where somebody was catching them. Like, well, it doesn't even matter that I'm boat one because <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> I'm not going there. Do you think most people err to the side of the code of conduct, Brandon Cobb? Uh, I would say eighty <laughs> percent. Yeah, I would do. say that's eighty percent. Do. You probably got some, and I'm not even saying you're a bad egg for doing that necessarily, but there are people that are more aggressive, I would say. And that, yeah, yeah. that's a good number. I'd yeah, like 80. there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of pros that I'm 
they're great guys. I mean, without saying names, the great guys off the water, but on the water, they're going to do whatever it takes to catch yep. fish. And then you'll be buddies with them again after, but on the water, you might not like them very much. <laughs> on the water, <laughs> you're throwing your horny toad right at their face. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just a lot of people treat it. Like, I, 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 I mean, I'm serious and, you know, obviously take pro fishing very seriously, but I, I'm kind of having fun out there. There's a lot of guys that treat it like a, you know, hard, like, I mean, they're serious. Like, you don't want to, you don't want to get in their way. Like, <laughs> buddy, there's a bunch of people just in club tournaments that are just staring at yeah, people like they're going to gut them. <laughs> you should mm-hmm. have fun. And now look, it's your living. It's your livelihood. It, it's how you feed it yourself, is. feed your family. You've been after it for a long time. You do take it serious in preparation and all that. But I think there's also an element that we forget in all this is that fishing is fun at the end of the day. It's supposed to be a fun thing. It can be, it cannot be fun a lot of times when you're not catching them. Uh, Ask me how I know. But, but uh, it's supposed to be fun. And so I think a lot of times this drama kind of takes away from it, man. I think that's what frustrates me growing up in this social media age that we're in, coming up in it. It does. Is like, uh, like you could catch one on a frog and bass can post it on Instagram. People would be like, he should be live scooping. <laughs> and then they can post somebody live scooping. They're like, they should be throwing it's a so frog. Cool. These bunch of idiots, you know, whatever. Like nobody's happy anymore. <laughs> no, it's not. Well, I, but, but I think the thing is majority of fan base and people following whatever, they are happy. Yes. But yes. They don't comment. Yes. That's right. They just <laughs> sip just in their coffee enjoying mind. it. They sip yeah, in their coffee. Keep... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, you can get a bad negativity towards everything if you, if you, you just got to know only negative people comment. That's, That's what true. That's true. You will also, you got both ends of the spectrum. You got super positive people are like, yes, that's yeah. awesome. And then you have the ones that are just like, Brandon Cobb couldn't catch anything without Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> like they yeah. make a bad thing out of a sponsor or they make a little Joey Swintes, Swint- my favorite last name, <laughs> Swintes. With his cowboy hat, he's just out there. That's the only reason you catch him because he gets to wear that hat. Why does Brandon yeah. Cobb have a cowboy hat? I bet Bass doesn't let him. <laughs> you just see all that's it in a yeah, nutshell. That's it in a yeah. nutshell. Oh that's my it. goodness, dude. Uh, well, what, well, down there, if you get in any trouble, Cobby, if you get in any trouble mm-hmm. down there, I know a lawyer, <clears throat> I know a guy, <laughs> he's from you follow. He's the boss of Lake Ufall. I don't know if he's the boss of Sabine, but you let me know. I'll get you. I'll, get you. I'll slide in his DMs. I'll get you hooked up. You and Shane get any trouble down there around Orange, Texas, any legal trouble, you let you me know. Us. I got you. You got us. I always got yeah. you, boys. Actually, you know what? I, I'll say this before we go. I appreciate your time so much. I've, I've enjoyed the heck out of this, man, and I hope you win Angler of the Year and that we get to do this again at the end of the year. But I've got your back. I do not have Shane's back, and here's why. <laughs> okay. And I've told this story on here many times, and he gets tired of me telling it. But Shane Lee Hugh tried to take my life in, in August of 2015 on Lake Washington. He oh, tried. God. He did. He tried to eliminate me from, from just life. And in his, in his boat at the time, and uh, I, I just met him, and I was a co-angler. It was the last force wood cut for co-anglers. Maybe he was mad I was there. I don't know. Uh, we pulled up on some schoolers, and I caught one and lost one. And he basically told me I was going to be on the only shot at catching a bass all day long because it was a million degrees and it sucked. And I practiced with Wesley in practice and I never had a bite and I ate all the snacks and drank all the water for three freaking days, daylight dark, and we never caught a bass. I know of it sucked. And so he's like, I'm running brim beds for the rest of the day. And I'm like, well, I'll be back here just like listening to music because I get it. You got to do what you got to do. And Shane LeHue, ladies and gentlemen, I've told it on here many times, and i got to get Shane on as a guest so I can just put him on the spot and make him apologize to me publicly. Um, but I was on the back deck, just back there just spinning in the chair, just looking at the sky, trying not to self-combust in the August heat at Lake Washita. And he hit a piece of stand, standing timber with his Minn Kota on 4,000. I didn't know a boat could go that fast. He had extra batteries. There was all kind of stuff going on with him and Brandon Cobb that week running the banks. And he hit a piece of timber so hard that it changed my DNA. Like, my feet went over my head. My head landed on the cooler step. I broke his net with my fat ass. All kind of stuff happened. And Shane was like, oh, are you okay? He just comes running. And he almost took Luke Duncan out of this world. So, Shane LeHue, I will not hire an attorney for you until I'm still thinking about suing. As a matter of fact, I might hire Joe Durham and come after Shane LeHue. I still got a bad back from that situation. 
I remember this. I remember Shane telling me about this at the end of the day. Because we barely knew each other. Like, I was just getting to know y'all then, fishing as a coach. Yeah, well, that was like our second year yeah, ever fishing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know him. I drew him. I was excited about it. I was, I'd heard a lot about Shane. I was like, and super, like, the nicest guy in the world. Like, I, I'm, I'm a gigantic Shane LeHue fan from that day on, too. We had a great day. But I love telling that story because it is one of like the top five funniest. And I was mortified. Like I was so we embarrassed. Need That's what oh we need to go Oh my gosh, dude. I'm telling you. And he'll, he'll, he had his back to me throwing his buzz bait, but my feet, like I went feet overhead, complete like backflip off the deck. And he had the net propped up there and I broke the net. Like I landed on the net. I hit my head on the cooler. Stage. He's like, what just happened? He's like, I'm so sorry, buddy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's one way to bond with somebody, though, is almost killing them in a bass boat, <laughs> Shane. <Liu. laughs> so that was got, a dangerous place for that. Oh my gosh, to do dude. That. Yeah, so dangerous. That was my first time ever on TV, and I that's do right. You remember the clip of me falling in? Oh, basically? that's right. I yeah, tried to yeah, hand my yeah. rod around a tree all smooth yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. it wasn't smooth like. <laughs> that's right. You top ten that one. I did. Yeah, that's the Brad. That was the Brad Knight Cup. That was the one BK one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that was the BK uh, Cup there. And and uh, man, that what a great event that was, dude. Not to just no. go down that rabbit hole. Such a how great did they treat us at that the, event? The cup for fun. Yeah. Yeah, all of them were a blast. So, that's what. And, and that I, I, a lot of it was because that was my first like ever professional like championship thing. Yeah, but it yeah. was that was a cool tournament. Yeah, it's first class all the way, man. That was always such a great event. I miss that event, and and I miss that time of year too because it's like you said, it's a it's grimy, it's it's brim beds, it's up the creeks, it's up the you know, it's just they were always yep. so good except for the Murray one when it was just epic top water eats it was. um you and atkins battling it out and that one was freaking that was one of the best tournaments of all time in my opinion it's such a fun one to watch for it sure was. But, I was um, yeah yeah you were <laughs> yeah that's when you couldn't stand up you were hobbled yep. hobbled up <laughs> captain cobb i think they were calling yep. you there that's it. yeah that's it. yeah kyle wood and crew well, buddy, I I appreciate you. You tell Shane that uh, he should lawyer up, but I'm definitely hiring Joe for the incident on Washita, the attempted hit on my life. Uh, had it I'll been years later, I would have thought Boyd Duckett put him up to it. You know, <laughs> if it had been like 2019, he would have yeah. got a letter from from my attorney Joe Durham. All right, buddy. Well, you uh, appreciate you, man. I had a great time with you as always. Good catching up and uh, smash him up at Sabine, buddy. Don't jerk Thanks, them over man. the boat. I'm not. I'm going to tone down. Tone seven down. Foot medium, seven foot medium heavy. That's all we're going to. Stand down. Stand down. Brandon Cobb, <laughs> I appreciate you, man. All right. Thank you, man. Thanks, man. Bye. Brandon Cobb right there. I think a lot of that that dude right there. He's fun. He's, he's a lot. He's Brandon's one of those guys that he's like, um, he seems like he's sneaky quiet, but he's really funny. Like, he seems like he's all business. Brandon's a funny, funny dude uh, on and off the water. And uh, glad that we got the sauce from him presented by the W Sauce. America's Worcestershire sauce. Go get you some of that and try it. Uh, Look, just trend setting each and every week right here. I am giving away the keys to the best content you could ever produce. Bass Fishing World, let's... Let's church this stuff up a little bit. Let's let some folks get smacked in the mouth at the next event. Speaking of the next event, National Professional Fishing League, NPFL. We're going to Santee Cooper this week. I'll be doing the live, 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 live coverage down there. We got our weigh-in show, weighing in with myself and Fat Cat on the Fix TV app. I'm going to be doing that on days two and three. It's Memorial Day weekend. I hope you all have a good Memorial Day weekend. It's always a good one to get out of the water. It's a little crazy. Be careful. But uh, if you're not, you're sitting around the house having some cervezas, having some adult beverages, turn on that MPFL Live Friday and Saturday from Santee Cooper. We'll have John Cox back with us this week, Patrick Walters, and all the daggum MPFL hammers. Hammers. Daggum Timmy Reams. Daggum Brandon Perkins. Too many to name. Sheldon Collings. They're going to be doing work down there. Keith Carson. To me, it's going to be an interesting one. I've never – I don't remember a, a, a professional event being this late on Santee, so I think it's going to be – it's going to be one to watch. I think I think Walters could be a handful down there being local. He had a he had a miserable event there in the Elite Series. Of course, Patrick, you know, just coming off the top ten at Lay, 
fantastic. Got an MPFL win last year and second in the MPFL. Uh, and they had to miss the last one at Wright Patman. So I feel like having a bad one at Santee, he's certainly going to be a guy this week you better watch because if it's if it shifts a little offshore, brush pile deal, he knows that thing at Santee. But then you got our shallow water guys that are fantastic and and so much cover to dissect there at Santee. It's going to be a fun one, man. I'm I'm really uh, – I love what I get to do for them. Y'all know I say that. It's redundant at this point. I love getting to do live coverage, but I'm really this one was a weird one. When they put it on the schedule at this time of year, I was really uh pumped up to see how it shakes out. So y'all be sure to tune in TNPFL.com. I don't think there's any other event going on this week. So bring yourself, bring your eyes to the MPFL. All right, we'll take you out with some Biloxi Blues. I appreciate each and every one of y'all as always. And I'll see y'all. Next week, actually, so next week's show will probably upload on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday, as it being Memorial Day, I'm not going to post on Memorial Day. I probably won't even record, actually, until like Monday. I'm going to try to take a couple days off once I get back from MPFL on Sunday. But uh, Tuesday would probably be the, what day would that be? The 30th, May the 30th, will probably be the next LBL, so we'll miss next Monday. But we will have one fresh and ready to roll out on Tuesday the 30th. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. Be sure to hug your mama. Biloxi Blues. Thank you. Some town to two, that was loud. I never could. Sorry. It last. Your ears are now damaged. Spanish moss, a Civil War ghost. Well, I'm going to leave them in the past. Sweet. Any direction, Lord, I'll be fine. It don't matter, east or west. North, south, wherever the wind blows. I'm leaving those burdens in red. It does not know my name And I don't care No, I don't care Heading my way For another place And I got three good tires and a spare Just a white line gypsy Getting out of Mississippi With just enough gas to get there